Hello, hello. Welcome everyone to another day of Leak Code live streams. Today is the face reveal. There's a reason I'm doing a face reveal today, and it's because I had my first episode of the podcast that I'm starting called Castware. If you were a part of the stream yesterday, then you know that at least for a couple of days prior to this, I was working on a podcast. After doing all these streams and after having so much fun with this, you know, I've been trying to experiment with many different things. One of those things being like the Leak Code Explore cards, other things being like this challenge I'm doing, just trying to do all the Leak Code live streams. And I realized that, well, I've always known that I like talking and I'm very, you know, I'm very much like an extroverted person. But I figured, you know, how else can I incorporate talking and still talk about things that I like to talk about? And I figured I'd start a podcast. And since I just finished that podcast stream like half an hour ago where I was showing my face and essentially revealing myself, I might as well also do the same thing for these streams. I think if anything, they'll provide a little more relatable, relatability, that's the, that's the word, right? Relatability for people to just like watch me and see who I am. And I think just like you seeing my face hopefully connects you more just like with everything that we're doing here. So yeah, it's interesting. And I, I wanna see how this goes, particularly wanna see how my computer handles it, which so far it looks like it's doing all right. I don't have like too old of a computer, but I have had times before where like the computer just starts making like so much noise. So Christo says run. So I, I guess, I don't really know how to respond to that, but <laughs> Python Gaming says congrats on the podcast. Yeah, thanks so much. Let me actually show you all what I'm talking about a little bit here. So the podcast, a couple things, right? So on the podcast, so this is the podcast right here. You can find it on this channel. So it's called Sam Huang, Lee Code and Life, Castware Podcast One. The name of the podcast is called Castware. So it's just like the last half of podcast and the other half of software. So Castware, that's how I came up with the name of the podcast. And really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find people that have had their lives impacted by Lee Code in a positive way. Whether it be like maybe they were stuck in a hole and they started doing lead code questions and they got to the next step in their career, or maybe they've achieved something crazy on lead code, like they've done a ton of contests, maybe they hold a very high ranking, or maybe something like they just really enjoy software and they have done something really cool. These are the types of people I'm trying to get on this podcast. I really just want to have fun with it and see how far I can take it. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do here. My the, the channel that I'm actually going to be uploading these to, I wasn't able to upload the first video to yet because I actually need to have had this this channel for a little bit longer and I think that date is actually tomorrow so for the first one I uploaded it to this main channel probably once this is available for download I'll go ahead and move it to the other channel and then all future videos will be on the castware channel here on YouTube so if that's something that you're interested in if you want to see more podcasts in the future if you want to be part of a podcast yourself reach out let's have a conversation let's just talk about pretty much anything and let's see if we can get you on an episode but i'm very excited for the future of this channel i'm very appreciative of, of everyone that has been viewing me since day zero thanks so much like ca caught the last few minutes by the way john taylor that's awesome and it's cool i just saw you on the discord so that's awesome and yeah very excited to see where the channel goes i'm very excited to see how this podcast evolves i know there will be a lot of iteration you know, trying to get things better and more ironed out. I was really nervous for this first one, to be honest. But we're here now, and let's just keep going. So this will be the first podcast, not podcast. Now I'm going to start saying podcast a lot. This will be the first Leco Live we do with uh, a live webcam feed, which is, is neat. It's different. Hopefully, hopefully you guys like it more. If you guys don't like it and you think it's just like a waste of space, you can also let me know that too, and we'll just take away the webcam feed. But I want to try it out for a little bit and see how it goes. So let's just go ahead. We're currently sitting at 263 problems. And we're going to go to page four. And we'll see. So now not only can you hear me make mistakes and see me make mistakes on screen, but now you can actually see me like on screen turning red and freaking out. Why can't I solve this problem? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I have no idea. We'll figure it out. All right, so three divisors is going to be the first question that we do. Now I can't hide. So it's like the ultimate pressure. I've put everything now, right? Now we have like my voice that you can hear. Like, am I trembling? Am I scared of the question? 
this is like a real interview, right? Except now I have more than one person looking at me coding. And, you know, I obviously don't want to make terrible content. I want to do something that's decent. So I got to gotta do the best I can. But that's what we're here for, just to have fun and do our best. So Marvin says, yo, what's good, bro? New face cam. I like it. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I've had the face cam for a while. I just never enabled it. So, uh, you know, we'll go. Oh, this is Mark, not Marvin. That's funny. I thought the name seemed similar. But Mark, new face cam. I like it. Thank you very much, Mark. I also like it. I think it's a cool spin on things. Marvin says pod was amazing. That's that's really cool to hear. Yeah, if you guys, if you go if you go to the YouTube channel on the description of the podcast, I have the link where I, ha- I have the link to the actual Castware channel. So if you guys want to head over, to, you can head over to the podcast video and then subscribe to this channel. And that way, anytime I put on a new episode, I don't have like a set schedule yet or anything. I don't know how frequently I'll be making these podcasts. But at least you'll be up to date whenever a second episode and third and fourth and, you know, whatever comes out. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to this. I think it could be very cool. Okay, so three divisors. Let's get to it. Let's see if we can figure this first one out with the face cam. I can't hide now, like Christos said. Great idea. Lee Code Focus podcast. Subscribe. It says CS Practice Live. It seems like we might have very similar goals here. CS Practice Live and Lee Code Live. You know, actually, I I might want to talk to you if you have any, you know, if you want to reach out, I would, you know, and if you're doing something similar, that could be something cool to also have someone like that on the podcast that's trying to, you know, that has a similar goal. All right. I've been talking too much, but I really appreciate all the conversation and actually keep it coming. If you have more to say, say it and I'll try my best to address all the comments. All right. So given an integer N return true, if N has exactly three positive divisors, otherwise return false. An integer m is a divisor of n if there exists an integer k such that n equals k times m. So let's see. Can we just give an integer n return true if an n has exactly three positive divisors? I am in the Lecosphere. Definitely have this channel. Nice. I can't like I'm guessing that you're probably writing to me on Twitch. And for whatever reason, like I see the Twitch chat on the stream, but I don't see it like on this chat. So I can't like click on it or anything. So if you want me to be able to see it and I encourage if you're watching on Twitch to go to the YouTube channel because that's where all my content will be. Twitch is just ma- mainly a way for me to like increase visibility, but really the majority of my, my time and effort will be mostly spent on YouTube. So definitely join us on YouTube to see everything else. Okay, let's see this one. So integer M is a divisor of N if there exists an integer K such that N. So given an integer N, Okay, return true if n has exactly three positive divisors. So it's almost like, I mean, I could think of a brute force way of doing it. And I have a feeling that's probably not the best way of doing it, especially since I was just talking about this on the podcast, actually. If it's one thing I've noticed is if there's an if there's a interesting, not an interesting, because now I'm I was I was reading what Marvin said, and that was interesting. If there is a question that's easy that has like a very good like to dislike ratio, it almost always means that there's probably like a pretty clever way of doing it. The way that I'm about to approach it, I think is probably too brute force and not the right way of doing it, but we can at least start that way and go from there. Marvin says, I didn't know you worked at Citrix. I plan on applying soon. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I I work at Citrix. I've been at Citrix since 2017. And yeah, it's been it's been a really great time, actually. I've been, I, I feel like I've been fortunate to work with very great engineers and it's, it's been cool. It was my first job out of university and I, I'm still at the same place today. So it's been great. Yeah. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have about Citrix if you have any. And yeah, we can, you can reach out here or you can also reach out, you know, on YouTube comments or like send me an email or something like that. All right. So like do we start at let's see well i guess we'll just start at one right because i almost feel like could we do something like let divisors equals zero or let i equals to one i less than or equal to n i plus plus so what is i in this case so it says if there exists an integer k so it's like n equals i times m And then let's see, I know we need to like be able to, or I guess, yeah, I times some integer equals N or I divided by, this is like some math stuff that I I get, I can get easily confused into like the easiest stuff, how to beat the ATP resume system. Honestly, 
man, since I've been out of the game for so long, since I haven't like, I don't know, I can show you guys my resume if it helps. I feel like we're, we're sort of, we're branching out a little bit from the uh, intent of this podcast here, but uh, I haven't been on my website in a while, but I also do have a website. I just haven't logged onto it in a long time. I haven't posted since what, June 12th. So this is my, this is my website and I have my resume here. So yeah, if this, if this helps anyone, I can just, I can just leave a link to my site because on the site you'll see my resume and you can just go through that. And I don't know if that could be of any use, but I, I did use the same resume to get interviews at several places just by applying uh, online, if that helps at all. I use, I created this using like a Google template and yeah, it, it was nice for me. So I can link to this on this chat somewhere here. There you go. You guys can visit that. And then of course, just like view my resume that way if you want. All right, let's get back to this because I already feel like I might make this like harder than it needs to be. Uh, if there exists an integer such that n, like we already have our n, so I'm looking for something where two equals i times m, but like the i is what we don't have, right? Or rather the m is what we don't have. But we do have the other ones, so can we, like how is it that we, uh, can we actually do, oh my god, this is like, I'm, I'm going to say it and we'll see. We can do like, we can subtract n from both sides, right? And then we essentially just make that zero. So would this just be like zero equals I times M minus N? And then if I want to get rid of the I, I can't just like subtract I, can't I? Is that like the way to do it? Or how can we, how can we set this equal on the other end? I forget if it's like, if this is I times M, do I have to divide by I on both sides? Maybe I can do that first. Will that make it any easier? If I divide by i on here, i times m divided by i, that'll just leave m, right? And then here we have n divided by i is equal to m. And then do we just do times n? So, but then wait, that just leaves us in the in the same place that we were to begin with, right? An integer m is a divisor of n if there exists an integer k. such that n equals k times m. Sometimes seemingly simple problems like this, because I'm guessing I'm going to look. Okay, this is math. I, I feel like I've historically not done well with math questions because I haven't touched algebra or anything since, what, 10th grade? And that was like 14 years ago or something. I don't even know. Yeah, I'm 29 now, so 10th grade was, yeah, 14 years ago, actually. Someone, someone, give, me, uh, someone give me the formula for this. <laughs> three positive divisors otherwise return false an integer m is a divisor of n if there exists an integer k such that n equals k times m four has three divisors one two and four so if we get to the four and i start at one see like here would be what four okay but then i get to the next one if this is two times what two okay two times i need to find something uh four divided by two is two i guess that can be would it just be m yeah but what is what is the m Give it an integer n return true if n has exactly why is this being so complicated modulo probably it probably is modulo, but wait, is it just saying, is this the same thing? Like, is this divisor thing being more complicated than it needs to be? If it's just like two divided by two is one, two divided by two is one and two divided by one is two. Oh, is it literally just that? Wait up, wait up. If n modulo i is equal to zero, divisors plus or equals one return divisors equals three is it actually just that false false this is why we have a great community so we can all clarify our understanding right false true 
if this works though, I'm certain this is not the most efficient way of doing it. Math questions like this almost always have a better way of doing something. I mean, we got 61.72, which is not terrible on the first try, but let's see if we can, let's run this again and see what we get. And I am very curious to see what the solution is here. 40.63, let me just like remove some of these tabs here. Ninety-nine point twenty-two. Hey, I'll take that. Nine grade math. I know. Let's see. That's nine grade math. Nine grade math for me is is fifteen years ago, man. I haven't touched ninth grade math in fifteen years. That's what happens. You don't lose it. You don't use it. You lose it. And I've apparently lost it. So that's just how how it goes. But let's see the discussions. Is it is it? Oh, lost the stream. Hopefully it reset itself just fine. That's the thing. Like, I hope my computer can handle this, like, live stream here. Yep. Uh, yup, as in, like, a, okay, we back. Good. So Streamlabs is doing its thing. It's resetting like it should. Good. Believe that we shouldn't be calling this approach O of 1 as time complexity is derived under the assumption that the problem size goes to infinity. This set of primes is derived under the constraint... As the problem becomes larger, the set increases in size as well. Under any constraint, all algos finish in finite number of steps. We apparently shouldn't call all of them O of 1. Manually finding all the primes. Yeah, this is, um, I'm not like, I mean, it's, it's a cool question, I guess, but I don't think it's one that I have to spend too much time on. I hope you all agree. This is not like a two-sum question, right? It was two some super high value question, but I think this one's okay if we move on. But a, it's cool that uh we solved it, even though let's see, like Python Gaming and Mark pretty much also gave me the answer. So we all us three solved it. Well, hey, three divisors, and we had three people solve it. So that's that's the uh, that's just how it goes, right? All right, strong password checker number two, right? Three divisors, strong password checker. Yeah, reveal. No condom, Chris. Hey, you've been actively, like, you've been on the stream, like, all the time, man. That's awesome. Welcome back. Good to see you. Yeah, face reveal today. I figured that showing my face might bode well for the audience. Maybe people will feel like they can relate more to me. And I'm all for that, so that's cool. All right, so a password is set to be strong if it satisfies all the following criteria. It has at least eight characters. It contains one lowercase letter, it contains one uppercase letter, it contains at least one digit, it contains at least one special character, and it does not contain two of the same character in adjacent positions. Well, I mean, I feel like if you're really good with regex, you can write a regex to do this. I almost feel like I kind of want to go down that route. It contains at least one lowercase letter, one uppercase letter, one digit, one special character. I mean, we can write, let me see, it does not contain two of the same character in adjacent positions. Bro, I confused you for someone else. I was like, yeah, because you put a sad face on the face review and I was like, oh, right. yeah. Oh, yeah, you better do all the problems like you said. I am. I'm, I'm going to do every single problem, man. That's what we're going to do on this stream, you know? That's what you all are here for, right? We're doing all the questions, like... Ah, uh, yeah. All right, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, man. That sounds like a waste of time. And if I wasn't, like, if I was grinding leak code, and if I needed to find a job, you know, yesterday, this is probably not the best way to go, but I'm doing this for fun. You know, Mr. 2408. I'm not sure what that means, but maybe that's... Maybe that's another popular user in the lead code universe. But let's see. So it has at least eight characters, contains one. I mean, we could do this in, let's see. It does not contain two of the same character in adjacent positions. We can literally just have what I'm thinking. Let's see. 
So for for let i equals zero, i less than password dot length. Let me see. That will change tomorrow, isn't it? Eight more problems tomorrow. This one is just check. Yeah. Uh, eight more problems. Two contests tomorrow. Oh, I'm not doing the contests. At least I haven't. I haven't started doing contests yet. I may or may not doing them at. I may not do them. Oh wow. I may or may not do them at some point. But you know, let's see. So I less than password length. I plus plus. What I'm thinking about doing here is pretty much just going through this one special character. So uh, we can do, we can say let lowercase equals zero, let uppercase equals zero, let digit equals zero, and let special equals zero. And it does not contain two of the same character in adjacent positions. So let's see if we can also do like if I is greater than zero and password of I is equal to password of I minus one. Here we return false here. Now we can have so it contains at least one lowercase letter. So I guess we can just do like inline regexes like we did the other day. So if here we test the current character at password I. We can test to see if this is a lowercase letter. And if that's the case, what do we do? We just increase lowercase plus plus else if A through Z dot test password of I, we do uppercase plus plus one digit else if I think here we can do zero through nine dot test password I digit plus plus and then else if now for this whole thing can we can I just put this in a capture group I think I can I think I hope this is valid. I don't think there's any like other special characters in here that I'd have to escape. But you know, we'll try it out and we'll see password of I, we can do special plus plus. And the only other thing Oh, and it has at least eight characters. So if it's already less, we can say if password dot length less than eight, we can return false it needs to be at least eight. And let me see. Okay. Okay, so this that's the first case, right? If it's less than eight return false, and then we set up different variables to match lowercase, uppercase digit and special for this one does not contain we can check that at any given point as long as I is greater than zero, because if we're at zero, and we check the previous one will be out of bounds, right? So if these equal each other we will immediately return false, and then we'll just start calculating digits for all these. So then I think what we can do Let's think of this like if all these it contains at least one lowercase letter. So the the addition no the addition of all these can't be because there could be more. So I guess I just have to have like let's see return lowercase greater than or equal to four and uppercase oh wait greater than or equal to four no greater than or equal to one and uppercase greater than or equal to one and digit greater than or equal to one and special greater than or equal to one. Does that how does that look to everyone? I mean, maybe this is a brute forcey way of doing it. But I, I feel like if this works, this is one of those questions where you just do what it's telling you. Right, because that's exactly what we did. The first thing we did was we checked to see if it has at least eight characters. So by using this if case up here, if condition, we can check for that quickly. Right. And then we set up our variables here to count the amount of each one of lowercase uppercase digit or special that we have. We go through our entire array. This one right here is checking for this condition right here. And then anytime we find a lowercase, we increment lowercase. If you find an uppercase increment uppercase, if you find a digit increment digit. And if we find a special character, we increment special. And then as long as all of these are greater than or equal to one, contains at least one, then we can return true, else we'll just return false.
So let's run that for our, our test case here. We get true and true. Let's run it for this one. Okay, we got true, false, false, true, false, false. All right, so let's submit it. Are we gonna be two for two? Oh, okay. We did not make two for two, but let's go, let's go over it and see why that's the case here. So what is it that we don't have? Like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> oh, so is that is that already why it failed? Like, cause this needs to be at least eight. Oh, it needs to be at least eight characters, but maybe not. Yeah, zero, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think it's that the length should be equal to eight. Uh, if it's or maybe if it's just less than. I guess if it's just less than seven, right? If the length is less than seven, that means there's six characters. If the length is less than eight. Oh, why, wait, why is this confusing right now? If the password length is less than seven, return false. If the password length is eight, then that's fine because this is eight, it has at least, so I guess we can do less than or equal to seven. Let's try that out and let's put this as a test case. I gotta figure out how to get like the Twitch chat to also show up in my history so I can like try and address previous comments. Oh wait, I should have ran that. Okay, so it's still false. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's eight, so it's not less than or equal to seven. So this one should be fine. Now, as we go through here, let's see, none of these are ever, so A, 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 like none of these are ever the same. And if we go through here, we have we have one lowercase, we have an uppercase, we have a digit, and we also have a special. <clears throat> so it should be true. Can I just put like a console log, log here and make sure we're getting past length check? Okay, so we passed the length. Oh wait, no, we didn't pass the length check for the last one. So I'm, I'm obviously making a very dumb mistake here. If it has at least eight characters, so let's let's just like let's just do this real quick. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so it needs to be. If it's yeah, if it's less than eight. See, so that should have worked originally, right? Because if it's if the length is less than eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? If it had if like the length of this was seven, it wouldn't work. So if it's less than or equal to seven, it should return false. So why did this one not make it? Because eight is not less than or equal to seven. But we only passed it. Let me just remove these to like doubly make sure that we're not actually passing that. Okay, no, that worked. So it passed it. Okay. So then it's something we're doing right here. I have a feeling it's with this special check right here. I'm almost certain that it's because of this. Let's go to regexer and let's pass this in here. So based on this, all of this looks fine. Oh, here we go. Matches. Oh, because this range character, right? So we should probably do. No, I don't want I don't want that character. Values reverse start character code. How can is it just? Oh, there you go. Matches that character and matches this character. So maybe this is the right one that we need to do. So let's go back. Let's change this to be this one. Let's escape those characters. And now it really doesn't like this, but this doesn't seem, this seems like something else. Why is it giving me this syntax highlighting like that? Did I just copy that syntax highlighting from, from the site? Okay, let's do this. Let's also get this test case again and let's put it here. And this time let's just run the code instead of like submitting it. So true, false, false, true. Okay, so that worked. So let's remove the console log and just bring this back here. 
One last running of the code for good luck. True, false, false, true, true, false, false, true. All right, let's submit. All right, 30%. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's see what we get. Let me try to run this again and see what we get here. Thirty-one point twenty-five. So I'm guessing that the best solution probably uses a single regex to check for all this, because I, I I feel like this is a, a decent way of going about it. But are we we're like always staying in the thirty percent range? Because test like is is regex test? I mean that's just taking a single character. But what is the time complexity of each one of these tests? Like regex test. Time complexity. Oh man, I completely butchered that. Average regex algorithms. Running a DFA compiled regular expression against a string is indeed O of N. And O of N. So is, are these always taking, let me see. What is the complexity of a regular expression? Time and complexity of expression of regex searches. So if it takes O of N, does that mean that it's just gonna be like, this won't be O of N, but it'll be O, it'll be like N times, well I, well, I guess in each one of these, we're only ever comparing a single character. So does that mean that that's constant? So would, would the time complexity just be linear here and space I'm not sure of whatever space it might take under the hood, but let's go ahead and see what we have to look at in discussions. Two codes with brief explanation and analysis. Use a hash set to count conditions. Oh, okay, I guess. Scene new hash set. Use S, L, U, and D to indicate special characters, lowercase, uppercase, and digits respectively. Okay, so we have seen. We, we did this exactly. If character is lowercase scene dot add, okay, and then password dot length is greater than or equal to eight and scene dot size. And I feel like we can probably benefit a little bit by putting this in the beginning, else we're just having to do all this work even though we could have terminated early. So I feel like this is probably better served at the top of the method. And then this, yeah, I guess I was almost gonna do that scene dot size equals four. Oh, I guess this is a this is a set. That's why they can they can do that because it holds unique values. Okay, method two, six passes. Six passes. Okay, password count, return password dot cars, any match. So they're just going through the whole thing multiple times. So I feel like we got one of, I almost feel like ours is cl more closely related to this first one, but instead of using a hash set, we're just using variables. Put the characters to a hash set. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And I know that sometimes like the language we're choosing, like I've seen people use, I didn't know the stream came back. Yeah, you always, you always gotta be looking, man. You never know. How long have we been going? Cause now that the stream stopped, I don't have like an actual time. Let me see. Boolean could be used too. When you say Boolean, what do you mean? Let me see. So we've been going for, uh, yeah, a little, about 35, 35 minutes. That's cool. Okay, so we'll remove this. We'll go here. Boolean could be used to 35. Oh, on line, oh, I thought you meant line 35 instead. I'm not entirely sure what you mean by that. Oh, I, passwords less than length and not lower and not upper and not digit and not special. 35 minutes, oh, 35 minutes, cool, yeah. Oh yeah, Z4477, yeah, we also could have done that too. Right, because, yeah, no, that's true. Because any, like zero is falsy, right? So if all these, yeah, if lowercase match lower equals one, and I guess, do we have to like, maybe it's not even worth, how do I say this? Like imagine, 
like if we have a lot of lowercase characters actually i kind of like it will terminate once you find all four yeah i i like that idea instead of having to go so if yeah no that's that's pretty cool right here we just say if lowercase you're saying that if we just do essentially if i just do the same check down here but like you said we can just have if lowercase and uppercase and digit and special uh, return true but we should also probably do that after we do our check over here and then i guess down here what we just return false because these will all start at zero. These will this will only ever be true as long as one of them is one. And now I almost feel like the next thing that you mentioned, because like if lowercase is already one, maybe we don't also need to check, like I don't also need to run this regex again. So what if I say here, like, well, let's run this and then I'll do one more thing. Let's see what we got here. True, false, false, true. Okay, so let's submit this one. Okay, well that that sucked. <laughs> if lowercase and uppercase, lowercase equals one. Oh, you just mean it's if it's a two and one are. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You're right. Let's do that. That's a very good point. Yeah, actually, that's that's good because like we're not so much concerned with like, yeah, true. That's right. We're dealing with like, yeah, right. You're you're absolutely right. That's a great point. That's a very good point. Boolean lowercase uppercase digit. Right. Or yeah, we can also have. Okay, now I understand what you mean by boolean Python gaming. That's right. You don't even have to make them numbers, and it's still man. My acceptance rate is. Is going down. Are we like past the 90s now? Are we below the 90s? Lowercase and uppercase and digit and special return true. So now why wouldn't this part work here? It returns early because of password probably. Neve, Neve JavaScript app. If password i equals equals password i minus one, return false. Let me see. Do we actually have any of the same? Oh yeah, the at at. Yeah. So this needs to be done at like a different time because, although this should. Oh, I see. But by the time we get there. Yeah. So it's like ordering of this, right? And it, it sucks because like I want to see what you have to keep saying, but the like I don't my 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 multi stream doesn't keep the history of Twitch, which is the only place other place I'm streaming, so that's why I'm guessing you're all coming from there. Let me see. I'm sad because we might be below that ninety percent now. It's like every single time ninety one point four, still in the nineties. Good, good. Really don't want it to get below. But I guess here, because here we do have a lowercase and we have a special and we have a one, so it goes to true, but we haven't gotten to the end yet. I would like to terminate. I guess we still have to go through everything though, right? Yeah, we can't just terminate when all of them are just one. I guess we'd still be returning the same thing down here. Let me try this and then also adding this to my test cases. This will probably be like the last one I do. Not the last question, but like th like the last time doing anything with this question so we can get to another one. True, false, false, false. Okay. Yeah, I mean, maybe that did okay, but also I want to try something else. Like if lowercase is equal to zero. Because I only want to run this if either one of these are zero, right? 
So if it's already greater, if it's already greater than zero, that means there's at least one. And I don't want to have to run the regex over. Special equals zero and so let's see, do we still get the same? True, false, 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 true, false, false, false. So slightly better only because we might we we're not having to run the regex every single time. And then yeah, probably this would serve better as a boolean in terms of like readability because having a zero and a one. But I think yeah, we were able to make some slight optimization optimizations even though now we're back in the 30s, so maybe not. Maybe we just got lucky on that run. Let's submit one more time. 50% but this is going the deep end. Uh, by that, do you mean like we're we're just like getting very how do I say it? Like we're like over engineering the solution at this end. Is that what you mean? Let's get to the next one in the meantime. Lowercase less than one versus lowercase equals equals zero, right? So here, let's see. This is the page we were on, right? Strong password, minimum distance between BST nodes. This one seems like it's gonna be fun. Given the root of a binary search tree, return the minimum difference between the values of any two different nodes in the tree. And they don't give us like an example or like they don't explain it here, four, two, six, one, three. Is it because the, the distance between two and three? And here, let me see, before I look at the answer, like, well, I guess, it's one, right? Yeah. Minimum distance between BST nodes. So the two nodes, and this is a binary search tree, which that definitely, that helps us, right? So if this is just, I think what we can do is we can just always take the distance between like, yeah, I guess here. Yeah, I already have an idea of how to do this because I can do like an in order traversal and always compare and get like, the current to the previous one. So I'll be at zero, I can set previous equal to that, then I'll get to the next one. And I can just do the current minus the previous the distance and that will be like my new min, then I'll get to the next one. Now, zero one, then we get here 12. But with that, if I had these numbers sorted, I guess, yeah, one, two, three, four, six. We could try that. That's at least the first thing I'm thinking of doing, like some in order traversal with like a minimum and a previous. And the lowest, the lowest node value is zero. So maybe I can set my min. What if I did like, let's do let previous equals zero and let min equals infinity. Here, I'll say in order equals root. We can say that if root, if not root, we'll just return. So that's if we just get to like a null node, and then we can do, we can go root dot left. 